Hello, Avi. I understand today we're going to talk about uh, Zionism and what the Jewish opposition to Zionism is. Maybe you could uh, give us a few words on that. Yes, there's a lot of confusion on this uh, basic point, so that's the starting point, I would think. Uh, Zionism is the uh, Jewish ideology that considers that the place for the Jewish people to be living is in the state of Israel, and that only the Jewish people should be living in the state of Israel. So there's two problems with that, and that's the reasons why there is a Jewish opposition to Zionism. First of all, Jews are being told that they shouldn't be living in Canada or the United States because they should be living in Israel. And uh, a majority of the Jewish people have rejected that presumption. And in fact, uh, there is about uh, six, uh, seven million Jewish people living outside of the state of Israel, and only about four or five million who are living inside the state of Israel as citizens. So a majority of the Jewish people have rejected the Zionist notion that they should be living within the state of Israel as its subjects. So. The majority of the Jewish people are, by definition, by Zionist definition, non-Zionist, because they are not Zionist. They are not living in the state of Israel. Yeah. This is simple definition. The reasons why they are not living in the state of Israel is because Jewish people have traditionally sought to live in a cosmopolitan manner. That is, that they look for the most interesting opportunities in the world scene where they can flourish intellectually or economically. And Jewish people have sought uh, to live in uh, Europe uh, over a great part of its history, but since the Holocaust, this has uh, been rejected as a primary site of settlement. So now North America is the favorite site, both Canada and the United States. And uh, Jews who live in Canada are Canadians. <laughs> surprise. <laughs> and Jews who live in the United States are Americans. <laughs> no big surprise. And they want to be Americans, otherwise they wouldn't be living there. And Canadians, Jews uh, uh, who are living in Canada, want to be Canadians. And Jews who live in Quebec, you know, want to be Quebecois. You know, so it's a matter of choice. And, and Jewish people have chosen to live elsewhere other than the state of Israel. And uh, Israel is not favored as a site, you know, for uh, Jewish people be uh, because of the problems that Israel has. In addition, in addition to uh, the desire of Jews to remain Canadians or to remain Americans and to raise their children in those countries as such, um, the reason why uh, there is no positive attraction to the state of Israel for many uh, American and Canadian Jews is because Israel cannot resolve its existential presence in the Middle East. Israel was a nation-state founded by the um, founding uh, ideologue Herzl, who copied basically the, uh, the paradigm or the model of what a country is from the German philosopher Hegel, who talked about a nation-state in which there would be one nation to be found within one territory that would establish one homogeneous uh, state. And this is the um, reason why the Jewish people in Germany were excluded eventually, because they were considered to be of a different nation, as did the uh, German uh, Jewish people, who nonetheless consider themselves to be German as well, as do uh, Jewish people who live in the United States consider themselves to be Americans, and Jews who live in Canada consider themselves to be Canadians. In other words, you can have a dual national identity, which is very common amongst Jewish people. By definition, the most of the Jewish people are not Zionists because they don't live in Israel. Yet when I read uh, things like uh, synagogue newsletters or the local newspapers, it, it always seems that it, it, it's taken for granted that everybody has the point of view of the Jewish, uh, of the Israeli government. Mm -hmm. Well, this is the way in which they try to convince the Jewish people to become Zionist or to pretend to be Zionist or to uh, be taxed, actually. Uh, by the Zionist movement, you know, the uh, annual sort of fund drive, you know, that's conducted for the United Jewish Appeal. 35% of those funds go to the State of Israel to um, uh, substitute for the funds that are withdrawn from the social services within the State of Israel for its citizens. Uh, they make appeals to the Jewish population elsewhere to uh, help the poor Jewish people of Israel. The reason why they're poor in the first place is because they're not a, provided with sufficient support 
because the money that uh, is available to the governments of Israel are used more so for military military purposes than for social services. And uh, and so they ask uh, Jewish people elsewhere to uh, to subsidize you know the lack of uh, social services in Israel. And so they are taxed as any citizens of uh, of Israel is is taxed you know by the state of Israel. However, unlike uh, citizens of the state of Israel, they are not granted a vote. The majority of the Jewish people don't have a vote, you know, for the governments of Israel. And yet they were told that they have to follow what the governments of Israel are dictating to them when it comes to Jewish politics. And Jewish politics now encompasses about everything, you know. It encompasses a certain position on Iraq, a certain position on Iran, a certain position on everything. So, basically what we have is a minority of the Jewish population which are dictating to a majority of the Jewish population. And ordinarily we would call that a dictatorship. And dictatorship, you know, uh, seeks to maintain its control by various means, including, you know, monopoly over the media, monopoly over the Jewish communal institutions like synagogues, and they pretend that everybody, you know, is in agreement with this dictatorship, when in fact we have uh, quite a different sort of set of opinions. And uh, the polls that have been conducted amongst the uh, American Jewish population, for instance, demonstrate that there is a, a large majority, about 75%, which are not in agreement with the governments of the State of Israel because they are in favor of a two-state solution, which the governments of the State of Israel have refused to implement and uh, resist, you know, by various means. For instance, the Oslo agreements stipulated that by 1999 there was supposed to have been a established a Palestine state. This was never allowed. The uh, Sector A, which was the uh, central municipalities of the various uh, Palestinian villages and cities in the West Bank, were reoccupied by General Sharon when he was Prime Minister of Israel, even though they were supposed to be uh, uh, allowed to uh, be uh, operated by the Palestinian Authority under uh, the President uh, Arafat at the time and there was supposed to be a further withdrawal from Sector B and then Sector C and this would have liberated all of the occupied territories of 1967. However, the Sector C in particular has continually been encroached upon by various colonies which are called Jewish settlements even though they are uh, legally speaking Zionist colonies. And now there's um, half a million uh, colonists who are living in the West Bank uh, sector that was occupied in the war of 1967. So there's been a lot of uh, action on the ground that has uh, been implemented contrary to the Oslo agreements and uh, in contradiction with the views of a majority, 75% about, of the American Jewish population and presumably a same percentage of the Canadian Jewish population. So we have uh, many characteristics of what uh, one would call um, a dictatorial practice uh, and um, uh, imposition upon uh, the uh, uh, Jewish populations that are living outside of the state of Israel. And this is uh, why there's an increasing, you know, organization of the Jewish opposition to demonstrate and to implement, you know, the true opinions of the uh, Jewish population living elsewhere other than the state of Israel. Thank you very much.